Want to swing on down to Corvallis, though, and talk to a friend of the program, uh, Beaver Blitz's own owner and proprietor from uh, 24-7 and CBS Sports, Angie Machado, BeaverBlitz.com. Any truth to the rumor that you, too, have entered the transfer portal? I have not entered the portal. Mm. But I also don't have any major big NIL deals. So, you know, it, it, it just is what it is. Just keep the grind alive. I, I'm i being dead serious on that. I don't ever recall anything quite like this. I'm trying to think of another situation outside of, like, SMU getting the death penalty. But that was in, in one sport, right? That was their, their football team died, yeah. and that'll never happen again. I'm trying to think of another situation in, in, in recent memory where you have, let's say, not a, a great – men's basketball program but one that a couple years ago was in the elite eight and had quality players a football team that was a top 25 team building consistently towards that a top 10 team in in women's basketball and there's nothing left and you don't have a conference i i just yeah i i don't know if i've ever seen this yeah it's sad it's sad for college sports i think you know and you when you get down to it um and and the transfer portal is happening everywhere. I mean, that's and and what what I kind of get concerned about. I mean, there's a lot of that we could go a lot of different ways. I mean, some of these with NIL and these I say agents and air quotes that are kind of coming out of the woodwork. Um, I hope these guys are getting and these players are getting the best advice. First of all, second of all, there's no guarantees when you enter the portal. Now, for somebody like Damien, yes, yeah. um, but there's no guarantees that you're going to find a, a better situation. Um, it's just a really interesting dynamic right now. Yes, Oregon State, it, it does feel like Oregon State just keeps getting punched. Um, but it, it also feels like a big, giant game of musical chairs because guys are leaving. and then. But it makes it hard for a college football fan to really get behind a team when, when the whole roster is basically turning over you know, every year. Yeah, and, and that's... You know, for for the Ohio states of the world and, 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 and places like that, I mean, we've seen mass defections, but it's usually... It's usually more role players that haven't, you know, haven't really found a footing yet, or you know, or a big NIL deal comes along. But yeah, and, and maybe but yeah, some... it's the guys that aren't playing. Yeah, and then they're going down maybe to a, another school that they're going to find playing time. But yeah, with with exactly. Oregon State, especially with the, the we'll, we'll get to the the basketball thing in a minute. But with with the football team, I mean, it was like the perfect storm of of the death of the Pac-12. Your coach leaves, but I mean, I look at it and. It's 14 players, but it's arguably your 14 most important players. And it's it's one thing to have to replace. This is why I, I feel so bad for, for Trent Bray. It's like, it's one thing to replace depth. It's another thing to replace almost every key returning guy you have. And then to sell the vid. Like, what... If you're Trent Bray, what are you selling recruits? What are you selling the transfer portal kids on right now? The portal, you're you're selling guys that want playing time yeah. and that want to come in and, ma- and make an impact. So, um, and there's guys out there that are like that. They want the opportunity, um, whether you know they didn't feel like they got the shot at their last school, um, whether they you know maybe were buried on a depth chart. So you are selling, come in and play now. Come in, make a contribution. Um, there's some great recruiters on that staff, and and I actually say that Oregon State has has bettered themselves from a recruiting standpoint with the staff they put together. Um, you know, Thomas Ford, Keith Hayward, Brian Gunderson, Kyle Devan. There's there's some great recruiters in that in that group. And and I think they can sell it because a lot of them played there. And and they're and they've told I mean, I've talked to them and this is what that you know, they say we're some people run when things get tough and we're coming to help and we wanna be here and we wanna see this thing through. So there's players on the roster right now that, you know, I, I think there's people that smell blood in the water and, and they're getting offers from other places to come play and they're staying put because their team needs them. And so it's not all doom and gloom. Um, and there are some, you know, committed players and coaches. And, and they're got, at the end of the day, there's still guys out there that want to play football. And so, and they want that opportunity. And that's what you sell. And I don't know how much you, you, you know or, or, or can or want to talk about it, but the it's one thing for a guy to leave. I didn't like the Damian Martinez calling the collective liars. I, I find that hard to believe that that in in that instant that they didn't take care of him and, and that quote they lied to me. Can do you yeah have have any kind of insight towards that? No, I mean it, it's a total he said he said here, you know, going on. Yeah. But 
I, I do think there was an article that came out yesterday from from one of you guys' competitors that came out that it, it kind of it laid it out in that yes and and the NIL the the damn nation NIL has come out and said we pay quarterly yeah. um, based on you know what the the commitments that they've they've fulfilled. Um, you know, if Damien was if if he was you know promised four hundred thousand over four quarters. Yeah. From that article, he was paid a hundred or ninety two thousand on March nineteenth, and eight thousand had to go to pay off the car that he purchased. Yeah. There's his hundred thousand. I mean, I I don't I, I think he backtracked. I think you know I don't know I, I I don't know if he just did that on his own. I mean, at the end of the day, he's a twenty year old kid, yeah. and and there's that there's that also there's. There's that argument. It's, you know, people say, oh, he's just a kid. Okay, but we're talking big decisions, yeah. big money. He wants to be treated like a professional. Then he has to, you know, make some, you know, man decisions here. So, um, and handle things and handle some criticism from the fan base or, or people out, out in the world. Yeah, it's it, we're having this weird kind of line that we're dancing now because it, and even I've been doing this 20 years and I've always said, you know, I, I try to tread a little carefully when I'm talking about, collegiate athletes kids. It's, yes, it's, yes. If, if i'm if i'm watching an nfl game and the left tackle is is getting smoked i have no problem saying that that's not good enough he's you know that's that's, that's a terrible game i've always treaded a little lightly um you know when, when you're dealing with a 19 year old freshman that's playing left tackle but it is kind of getting into this weird point now where you know with nil and millions of dollars in the transfer portal and it becoming more and more um professional we're still getting this blowback of well, you can't be critical or you need to, to lay off this. You know, we can't talk about Bronny James. Well, if you're making $4 million in NIL money and you're bouncing exactly. around, I, I, you know, is, is do the gloves come off a little bit. And, and, and you have to look at this, the NIL and their scholarships are being funded by boosters. Yeah. This is, you know, your, your fan base is supporting you. Um, I was the same way, you know, for, for, I've done it now 18 years it's always been, okay, I will be critical of the coaches or the administrators that are making, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're adults. But now you have ki- these college athletes, and I get it, you know, their frontal lobe isn't fully developed, and there's a lot of learning and growing up they have to do. But at the same time, they're, they're basically professionals at this point. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know how much you dance around. I mean, they want the notoriety. They want to be considered professional, at, you know, and I say that in air quotes. Yeah. But um, then I think they have to grow a thicker skin and, and realize that, yeah, you're going to have to, like you said, an NFL game, you can sit and you know criticize left tackle. He knows he had a bad game, but you can criticize him on air. Um, these players now, um, it's, it's kind of put up or shut up. Yeah, it's like if, if you sign a free agent deal and, and, and go to the worst team and you go, go play for the Cardinals and your season falls apart, I have no problem being what a terrible decision. And it's, it's kind of funny that like, Hey man, you chase the bag, enjoy it. But you do that in college. And now we're kind of getting blowback. You're a well, bad guy. Yeah. You know, that's, I, I think some of that stuff is, is starting to change a little bit. Uh, we're talking with Angie Machado, beaverblitz.com. I mean, you're connected to that, that program and the fan base, obviously, I mean, you make your, your living off of, of diehard beaver fans. And I've heard from so many that, that, I feel like at times just want to throw their hands up and be like, well, what are we doing here? Like, you're asking us to, to fund this. You're asking us to buy tickets. You're asking us to go all in. And it feels like the blows just keep coming. I, I, obviously, the you know, the, 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 the university has a plan to keep the, the, the sports teams going and keep them afloat. But how do they keep the fans engaged? How do they keep the fans from throwing their hands up and saying it, it, it doesn't matter what we do? You know, we, we can't win at this. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's there's something to be said. I mean, right now, Oregon State and Washington State can't really even do anything yeah. until after, like August one, just because of the settlement. Yeah. Um, but it'd be nice to hear from from Scott Barnes, you right. know, and kind of what's going on. And I and I think everybody felt like maybe we were kind of on this path. Football, if football could win nine, ten, eleven games this year, um, to stay relevant and you know keep, keep you know get into a good bowl game, um, there's there's some talk there. I, I think the the biggest blow right now has been women's basketball yeah. because here's a team that elite eight, they were all scheduled to come back Everybody. and now you have seven of them in the portal. So um, that to me speaks like, okay, maybe this plan that Scott Barnes has said is, you know, we have a plan isn't as strong as, as we all thought or, or we are, we're hoping. So I, I hope administration will come out even, you know, even if they don't have an update, but you know, say we, 
we have some things, fires and, you know, irons in the fire, we're working on some things. Our fan base is strong. I mean, but like you said, Beaver Blitz members, they're, you know, um, subscribing to a website. We give them as much inside info as we can. We're at practice every day. Um, they're the breathe, live, live, sleep, eat Beaver football. Oregon State had got to this point where, you know, you have this nice new side of the stadium. Yeah. They were selling out. And I, I, I hope they don't lose the casual fan because um, then it does spell disaster. But you can't throw up your hands at this point because just, you know, I think, I think there was this thought that Oregon State and Washington, Washington State would roll over and just go into the Mountain West, and that's a death sentence. Yeah. So you have to scrap. You have to fight to keep the funding to somehow, you know, with the ACC right now, that's going to blow up here before we know it. So there's going to be more shifting. There's going to be more, um, more movement. I, I think we all see the writing on the wall that the SEC and the Big Ten want to kind of have this super league, super, you know, mini NFL, if you will, NFL light. But I, there's still going to be a lot of space, whether that's ACC, Big 12, Pac-2. Um, maybe it's creating, merging those three into like a, some type of a, a conference, more you know, um, regional based, but kind of together. I don't know what the answer is. And I, people that make a lot more money than me figure that stuff out, but something's got to change. Yeah, the, so the end, um, game has, State, the end game has to be it, the big 12 of the ACC, right? It's the only, end game, it's the only, it, it is the only, um, because you, you can't sustainable. I mean, the, just the, the TV revenue alone, yeah. you would be cutting sports. You would be cutting the department, um, it, it, it's not feasible. So it has to be. And like I said, I think there's going to be, there's got to be something there too, because at some level, I think fans across the country, if you're not a big 10 or a, or a SEC school, there's still that desire to have some regionality. Yeah. And so I, I, I think at some level of TV execs and the powers that be, will will figure that out. But um, it's sure as heck is a bumpy ride right now. Yeah. It's, I, I just, I feel terrible because like I've never seen anything quite like it, and, and quite frankly, I don't think the university, I don't think the the players, and certainly the fans, I don't think they deserve this. So, the two things before I let you go: how worried should Oregon State fan be in that a, a, an Elite Eight team that should have been a, a contender last one out turned the lights off? Should we be concerned that Ruick's the next one out the door? And the crown jewel right now of the athletic department, the baseball team, we haven't seen that affected. Is there a, a, a shoe to be dropped there? Or is that sport kind of unique in that, you know, we've seen powerhouses, you know, the, the Pepperdines and the, the Cal States that, that have been able to exist outside of a, a power five dynamic. Are, are they insulated or is, is that potentially the next shoe to drop? No, I actually think baseball is going to be okay. And, and I say that kind of with a grain of salt because look at women's basketball. I thought they'd be okay. Yeah. I've asked that same question. I was talking um, with someone close to the, the department just yesterday and said, I mean, is this just like writing on the wall that Ruick's leaving? And, um, you know, they didn't have an answer. They don't know. Um, so I, I, he had an impassioned talk. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, it was after great. The Elite Eight. I thought it, it was amazing. It was great. I mean, it was a really heartfelt, you know, talk about being a beeb and his mom's a beeb and all this stuff. So I don't know about that, but baseball – it is. It's it's the bright spot right now. Um, but with them going independent, um, and then you have the entire pack, the former Pac-10, they're going to be looking for base. They're going to be looking for out of conference. Yeah. So I see that schedule being, um, they'll be fine. I mean, they're going to be scheduling Oregon and, and yeah. ASU and Cal and Stanford and, and Arizona. They have to because those schools can't be traveling to the East Coast, you know, yeah. week in and week out. So they're going to need some some local local schools to help you know boost rpi yeah like the i think they're going to be okay well i hope so because that's i mean right now that's what you got to hang your hat on and, and i hope rooks <laughs> i hope rook sticks around and 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 and, and kind of rebuilds this thing but at the same time like i i, I say this about anyone you can come out and, and, and say hey I, I i'm in this for the long haul i'm doing the right thing but circumstances change and, and I get it. If you get backed into a corner where you feel that you can't succeed, I'm not, I don't think it's fair to ask a guy to sacrifice a career if he doesn't feel that he can succeed. So I hope that's Absolutely. not, the, I hope that's not the case. And and, and I, I loved what he had to say after the loss, but you know, that was before he lost literally every returning player that he had coming Ever. back. But it's, it's going to be, it, it comes down to then how you handle it. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, that was the problem with Jonathan Smith leaving. If he would have handled it differently, yeah. I don't think Beaver fans would be upset with him. But yeah. the way he handled it, yeah. um, 
that's what what kind of hurt his stock in Corvallis. Yeah. Well, we hope for uh, you know brighter days ahead because it's uh, it's been a rough go down there for uh, the, the the Beaver uh, faithful, and uh, we feel for him down there. And uh, we know that you'll be covering it uh, and giving us all the updates. Beaverblitz.com. Find her on Twitter. She does a great job doing it for almost twenty years. Uh, front of the program, Angie Machado. Thank you for taking a couple uh, minutes for us. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I cannot recall another situation like this in 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 NCAA history. This is for for an entire athletic program. Uh, I I hope the baseball team continues because right now that's what you have to hold on. Well, to. and and honestly, the fact that they I I feel like almost got ahead of this thing, deciding no no we're good enough. No Mountain West. Let's make our own schedule. Let's pick our opponents. Let's make sure that we stay top of mind at least in the collegiate baseball world. I think that was really smart. I don't know that you could do that with say the women's basketball team, yeah. but. If you could, that'd be awesome. Fingers crossed.